Hey, man. Michael, nice to see you. So this is the first thing you do when you actually arrive at the venue or in a studio. You say hi to the sound man because he's going to be your partner in crime. And he's, of course, occupied with, you know, checking the microphones. And you ask him what kind of microphones he's using. You're connecting with him and you're respecting his craft because he has a very specific microphone choice. But this way, you can connect to the sound guy and you can start being productive and synergize. So, you put your stuff in the dressing room and there's three things you have to bring from the dressing room. It's a drum key, of course a pair of sticks and also maybe some gaffer tape. Because the sound guy is now at the mixing desk or in the control room already arranging the patching and also checking the microphone levels. But first of all, we have to make sure that you have everything in hand to be able to tune your drum set if it's not tuned yet, or at least check on the tuning. So, for instance, toms. If there's something you don't like, well, tune key, sticks, gaffer tape, or maybe, you know, ideally, one of these, you know, those sticky things you can put on your heads. And at the same time, the sound guy is like, ah, okay, this drummer is like well organized. Okay, this is gonna be fun. And despite the fact that the guitar player and the singer are usually like this with sound checks, you know, with drummers, oh, Jesus, it's first the drum sound check. That's gonna take a while. Surprise them. When you're well organized, it's gonna go fast, and they will be very surprised that you're done within, let's say, 10 or 15 minutes even. So, step number three. You're ready because you tuned your drum set, but first, before you start working together with the sound guy who is at the front of house or in the control room, maybe it's best that you first take care of your own monitoring a little bit. So just, you know, check if every microphone is working. Like for instance, just take your fingers, tap on those microphones, and see if they're all coming in before you start playing. So you can actually already communicate with the monitoring engineer. Actually, you shook hands with him as well. Or with the sound engineer in the control room of the studio, you can already tell him, hey man, I'm, I'm touching this microphone, but apparently it's not working. So he can double check and you get all the wiring, all the last checks done before you start actually playing. That's a really, really important point. Everything should work and get connected first before you actually go into the proper sound check. This way you will save a lot of time and also the sound guy will be very surprised and very positively surprised that you're actually also thinking in his place. You, he wants to have everything working and so do you. So you're on the same page. And if you really completely 100% want to own your sound check, listen to the engineer. If he requests you to play the kick drum, play that kick drum only, okay? Because he's occupied with checking the microphone lines, adjusting the preamps. He wants the kick drum, give him the kick drum. Don't start playing double bass or anything, just Go for medium tempo so he can really check on the resonance, he can really check if the microphone is not distorting, and at the same time, you can actually accustomize yourself with the acoustic surrounding, how the kick drum reacts to the surrounding, how your in-ear monitoring or your monitors are actually sounding with that kick drum. So don't go into any fast playing, just go like this. And you know what? Medium tempo. If this has to last for five minutes, well, then it has to. Now, you have to understand, kick drums are very, very, very peculiar. Because especially in a live situation, with all the acoustics of the venue, or maybe the smaller club, or even maybe the rehearsal room, the kick drum is like the most important instrument out there to not only have impact in your live concert, but also it's the most difficult one to sound check because those subwoofers, they move that air out of the speakers and it get, can get really, really boomy. And low end drum sounds also consume the most energy in a live concert. So, you keep that kick drum going when you sound check a snare. And you suggest to the sound guy, without him actually requesting you, after five minutes, you just add that snare. And you do it like this. We are still sound checking the kick drum. And that's the starting point.
point, you say, okay, it's been five minutes now. You go like this. So you keep that kick drum going. You're actually owning the kick sound check, but at the same time, you're starting to incorporate a snare hit. And if the sound guy really is into his session, he will say, hey, this drummer, nice. He's actually helping me to check how the kick sound is behaving with that snare on top. Perfect. Time gain, and at the same time, he will actually appreciate it, you doing it by yourself without him having to look for the microphone. Yeah, snare now. No, just do it yourself, bring it in. And if he wants you to stop, you stop immediately. If he doesn't say, tell you anything, you just continue. Kick, snare and hi-hat before toms and overheads and cymbals? Very simple. This is the ultimate test of the sound system because you have the low end for the kick, the lower mid-range also coming from the kick, but also the lower sub frequencies coming out of the snare are actually right there. Then you have the snare for the mid-range, okay, like the mids, and then the hi-hat for the highs. So you have to think like a speaker system. There's tweeters, mid-range speakers, and subwoofers. And everything is there just by playing a beat on the kick, the hi-hat, and the snare. Everything is there, kick, hi-hat, and snare. And opening the hi-hat once, uh, once in a while helps as well. And then, let's score a very big point with the sound guy. Even maybe with the musical director or whatever. First, bring in the cymbals, not the toms. Bring in the cymbals. Because you're always gonna play a cymbal in a song structure. You can play any song actually with kick, snare, hi-hat and a cymbal. Some songs don't have toms at all, unless it's specifically for the intros, for instance. But when sound checking cymbals, just do it on top of that beat. And this is what I usually do, and that impresses every sound guy I work with, or sound woman. That's actually when I have two crashes, Go for this one and this one separate, not like this. Because then you can help him checking the panning of the cymbals. So there will be one microphone here like this one. So that should come from that side of the PA system. And this one should come out of that side of the PA system. So the people actually, when they see you hitting that cymbal, it matches with the side, with, with, the, with the panning in their ears. So first you go like this. Sometimes I will just take my in-ear out, like what I'm doing with the electronic set, for instance. I'm hitting each cymbal side, and then I'm listening through the PA like, ah, the panning is wrong. Maybe you should reverse the panning. That's a winning streak for the drummer when you speak to the sound engineer. You go like this. And then you say, excuse me, I think this cymbal should come out of that speaker instead of that one. Can you maybe reverse the panning? And the sound guy will be like, whoa, this guy is paying attention. Completely different from, hey man, come on, get the panning right. Wrong. He's maybe doing other stuff you don't see. He's maybe changing compressor settings or maybe checking something like a little bit of distortion on one of the cables. Let him do his thing and just suggest him to change the panning. So everything goes smooth and you're actually owning the sound check since the beginning you came on stage or in the studio. And after the cymbals, after the kick, the snare and the hi-hat, you get into toms. But a lot of drummers make this amazing, very 
a social mistake, it's actually a little bit selfish of starting to do things. How do you want the sound guy to figure out what microphone is coming from where? So you just go one thumb each, one thumb separate, okay? Like. And if he asks you to play only the rack thumb first, you do it. Single hits and you try to hit that rack thumb right in the middle with the tip of your stick. Not like this. Not, uh, no, that's not what he needs. He wants you to play the full blown thumb sound. Give it to him. And when he says next, you go next. Then you go next again. Of course, many sound guys don't like actually a thumbs and B sound check like in fills. And that, that's normal. But what you can do is work together. And if you think it's taking a little bit too long, you could suggest it to him very friendly to change to another thumb. And you do it something, you, you do it like this. So let's say you've been doing this for two minutes. And then he says, hey, hey, uh, can you please stay on the rack tom? Okay, no problem, I'll stay on the rack tom. But when you still change your tom sounds, and he doesn't tell you to change back to the rack tom, you just continue on the second tom. But you don't go to the third one yet. So you help him speed up the process. And at a certain point, you can stop and ask him through a microphone or just yell, hey, Richard. Are you okay with these? Because there's still a floor tom as well. Just tell him, hey, don't forget about the floor tom. Stay friendly, work together with him. And then he will maybe yell back at you, yeah, that's good, please play the full drum set. And then this one happens a lot. That's totally gonna sabotage everything you build together. No, you just stay with that mid-tempo groove and incorporate the toms. At the same time, it enables your body also to warm up a little bit. So take advantage of the time you have together without the guitar player and the keyboard player on stage to actually have fun and enjoy first the acoustics of your surrounding. And of course, this happens all the time. Guitar player is sound checking while you're doing this. They're checking cables. Maybe the keyboard player, maybe the horn section is warming up. Guys, stay focused but also stay relaxed. If that bothers you and it, it bothers the sound guy, actually let the sound guy take the initiative to actually tell the rest of the musicians to wait for a little bit. You don't have to get mad at them because, you know, if you get mad at them, it always, it, it always blows a little bit, you know, the atmosphere because you will be on stage together and play together. So you should let the sound guy decide how to organize the sound check after you. But you can of course also help him asking the other musicians, hey guys, please, we're just finishing this. You know, uh, can you wait for another two minutes? And that's okay, okay? So to wrap it up, first of all, you come in, you get to know each other a little bit. You maybe ask him, hey, why are you asking this? Uh, why are you using these microphones? Second, you come from the dressing room or you come prepared to the drum set, you have your gaffer tape, you have your drumsticks, you have your drum key. Then you start tuning. Then you ask him what he wants to do first and you listen to him, you follow his routine so he has time to adapt your drum sound to the PA system and then you start checking the cymbal panning, you start 
actually playing a groove, you actually incorporate the toms, and at the same time, you're working together. You're communicating through what you're doing together. And then when the other musicians are bordering you, you just ask them to wait. No yelling, no competition, only synergy, and you'll be fine for the rest of the day. Own your sound check!